In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Launchpad in Live 10 and give you an overview of the functions on the Launchpad. Connect your Launchpad to your computer using the provided USB cable and ensure that you're running the latest version of Live 10. Your Launchpad Pro will be automatically detected by Ableton Live. On screen, you can see the demo session for Ableton Live Lite, which will open the first time you launch live after installing it. Feel free to open one of your own Ableton Live projects to follow along with this video. So let's take a brief look at the features of the Launchpad Pro, and then if you want to learn more, you can progress onto a set of more in-depth tutorials afterwards. Press tab on your keyboard to enter the session view. The columns on the Launchpad correspond to tracks in Ableton Live. The rows on the Launchpad correspond to scenes in Live, and the individual pads on the Launchpad correspond to clip slots. We'll cover this in more depth if you choose to watch the music making tutorial next. You can use the scene launch buttons on the right hand side of the Launchpad to launch a whole row of clips, which is called scene in Ableton Live. I can stop these clips from playing by using the stop clip function on the bottom row of the Launchpad. On the left hand side of the launch pad, you have a selection of clip controls and transport controls. And on the bottom row of the launch pad, you have a row of track select buttons and a row of mixer controls and production functions below. Some of the buttons have two functions. You can hold shift in the top left corner of the launch pad to access the second shift functions like double, record quantize, capture MIDI, undo, redo and more. You can progress to a more in-depth tutorial on the session view later on if you want to. The note mode has three different views. Firstly, we have the chromatic mode, which shows us all of the available notes, but highlights the notes in the currently selected scale. The pink pads represent the root note of the scale. The blue pads represent the notes in the currently selected scale and the unlit pads are notes outside of the currently selected scale. You're able to hide the notes that are outside the currently selected scale in the note mode settings, which you can access by holding down shift and pressing note. Press here to turn on scale mode and return to note mode by pressing note. Now we can only see the notes inside the currently selected scale and it's impossible to play anything that's out of key. The third view in this note mode is drum mode, and this is displayed when you select a track in Ableton Live that has a drum rack loaded onto it. You can progress to a more in-depth tutorial on the note mode later on if you want to. Chord mode is designed for you to easily explore, build, save, and play complex chords straight from the grid and quickly find new harmonies. Here you have a selection of notes which are in your chosen key and you can play the scale by running up the first column. Any three notes in a given row will create a triad which is a simple three note chord. The orange pads will play the main triads in your selected key, and these are inverted or structured so that they sound coherent when they're used together. The grey pads allow you to save your own chords, and this is called the chord bank. You can lock the chords in the chord bank so that you don't accidentally add or remove notes from them by using chord lock, which is the pad in the bottom right of the grid. And the pink pad next to it is the sustain pad, which acts like a sustain pedal on a piano. You can progress to a more in-depth tutorial on the chord mode later on if you wish.
Custom modes turn the Launchpad Pro's 8x8 grid into a deeply customizable control surface. There are eight custom modes available on the Launchpad Pro, which you can switch between by using the track select buttons. The default custom modes range from a bank of eight faders in slot one, four octaves of the keyboard layout in slot four, and more. You can find more information about the default custom modes in the user guide. Novation Components is the hub to create, store, and explore custom modes. You can progress to a more in-depth tutorial on custom modes later on if you want to. The Launchpad Pro contains a four-track sequencer which can be used to control software and hardware. You can switch between the four sequencer tracks using the four illuminated track select buttons. In the steps view, you have a blue 32 step sequencer at the top of the grid. And depending on what you want to sequence, you can choose between viewing a drum grid, a scaled keyboard, or a chromatic keyboard to input notes. In the patterns view, you can access eight individual 32-step patterns per track, which can be chained together to play in order and grouped using scenes. Back in the steps view, the scene launch buttons three to seven on the right of the launch pad allow you to access the stated functions on the fifth and sixth rows of the launch pad. The final scene launch button allows you to print the sequencer's content to an Ableton Live clip. In the settings view, you can select whether you want to display a drum grid, a scaled keyboard, or a chromatic keyboard using these three yellow pads. And you can also change the selected scale, which is common across the note, chord, and sequencer mode. You can also change the MIDI channel that each sequencer track sends out MIDI to, from 1 through to 16. The Projects tab allows you to save all of your sequencer content and the currently selected scale to one of the 64 project slots. You can also back up your projects in Novation Components. You can progress to a more in-depth tutorial on the sequencer later on if you want to. If you've got everything that you need to get up and running with your launch pad, then that's great. Let us know below. Alternatively, you can progress onto a music making tutorial in live.